It's part three. We're putting the front half on a 330 mile an hour top fuel dragster. You know, chopping this thing off, I noticed a couple things. You know, this lower frame rail on the inside, it actually has an issue. Now, this car, I believe, has never been front halved. But once we get this front end off, we'll be able to find out exactly if it has or not because of the nubs that are going to be coming out of these frame horns right here. So in the last video, you'll see that when I cut this, it actually did move. Now, guarantee you, if this thing's had any kind of lapse at all on it, right, going on down through there, 10,000 horsepower behind it, hell yeah, it's going to move around. But what you want to watch is, is how it moves when you cut it off. It does tell a story. So I'll finish cutting this back piece off the cage area, and then we'll work our way towards the front. Um, also, you know, I check once I get them all loose, I just check to see how free flowing it is and see if it's in any kind of a bind. It's a pretty cool shot here. You can see me moving this thing back and forth. But you know what? The thing seems pretty good. So let's chop the front end off of it now. So I've just marked it exactly kind of where I want it to come off at. And we're going to just do some slicing and dicing here. Now, different chassis manufacturers have different styles of how they mount the front end piece, the part, you know, that holds the control arms and stuff onto the main tubes. And this particular one, it's going to require a splice. Now, some of them have the same kind of technology as the does back at the cage area where the tube slides into another tube. Well, this one doesn't have that. So what we're going to have to end up doing is actually making some splice pieces to actually attach those main rails into that front end area. So once again, me and my Harbor Freight partner here, we'll just pull this old front end off. We'll set her off to the side because I am gonna look at that one area on that lower frame rail, what we would call on the right hand side. Um, if you noticed when Leah Pruitt's car buckled up last year at St. Louis, that is the area that was in question. Uh, it may have been cracked beforehand uh, on a previous run. But anyway, those lower frame rails kind of buckled towards the center and that caused it to fold up under load. Now, I've had several questions while doing videos and it's like, hey, how come you guys don't pressurize your tubes? And that way, so when the pressure leaks off, you'll know that there's a crack somewhere. Well, we run different lines down through the chassis. We also run some electrical lines down through the chassis tubes themselves. This one's the brake line. The other one that I had in front of me, that was the clutch line. And they go all the way down this lower frame rail. They come back through an opening. Of course, the rear end would normally be setting right here, but they come out the back, so that's where the brakes attach. And then this other line here is for the clutch management system. These are all made out of stainless steel lines, and this here is what we call the cannon. That's actually what controls the throwout bearing that releases the clutch arms and that kind of thing as it's going down the track. So I don't like replacing this line myself. Um, you know, if there's a different bend in it and things like that, it actually can change the way the fluid runs. So what I do is I disconnect it in the back, I shove it forward, I take this little bitty pipe cutter that I have here. Yeah, it's kind of time consuming, but I want to chop off as least amount you know just right behind the flare on that tubing and that way so i can save this line and use the same line uh, once i get that cut off i'll go towards the back and we'll just suck this thing back up inside the chassis that way so we can get a tube in here and get everything fitted and disappears just like that if you're careful you can take off just the flare end of the line and then we'll reflare that and we'll use that same line. So now I'm gonna take apart the front end fixture. I'm gonna take the front end piece off of it, remove the control arms, and then I'm going to clean up the areas where we're gonna be attaching the tubes to it. Um, remember, I had to make this thing to where I can slide this front end on from the front when the main rails are gonna be put into place. And you'll see that in the next video. When making some of these fixtures, and I've done this, I've screwed up, like, you really got to be thinking as you're putting things together and moving things around, hey, guess what? I got to be able to take this piece of crap off at some point 
or be able to put a tube inside another tube and things like that. So you really got to think about how you're making this stuff. It'd be so easy just to have something run over, weld to something, and then it just bolts on, and then you don't have to move shit. But that race car crap, they usually don't make it that easy on you. So headed back to the driver's area, we need to get these frame horns that are sticking out we need to get these inner pieces out of there so now we need to just prep everything because we're going to do some grinding um more so grinding than what we just did but i got to get some of this management stuff out of the way all this stuff we don't want you know all this grit and things like that in so i'm gonna have to take my time and uh really wrap this thing up before i start doing a bunch of grinding and cutting again I knew all that work in, you know, first and second grade of taping and cutting cardboard would come in handy later in life. So that's why I, I'm so good at that. But anyway, so I'm grinding back to the welds on this inside and outside tube. You want to take the least amount of material off, but yet you got to be able to break the weld a little bit or you'll never get these nubs out of the inside of these other tubes. So I end up doing it with a file at the very end. I can actually see the crack a lot better um, when the weld actually separates, you know, when you get to the base stock of the pipe so you can pull those things out. This is a little rig I made that uh, will go on the inside of the inside tube and then grab hold the back of it. And I use kind of a slide hammer effect here to pull that out. Now, this is one of the toughest ones because it actually has that opening there for that clutch tube that goes down through there. Mm, you know, half and half usually getting this thing out with this attempt so it's obviously not going to work so i'm going to take a tube i'm going to weld a nut on the end of it that that slide hammer will screw into then i will weld this tube to the inner tube and then i'll just jack that thing out like that we'll just hope that it it comes out now a lot of this stuff is completely welded together when the car is built new. So when you do a front half, you don't have to worry about the uprights and things like that welding into the secondary tubes. So this is how we're gonna figure out if this is a virgin front half or not. So once we get this piece out, we'll take a quick look at it and it'll tell the story. And I've even had some of these, man, that I had to go back in there and just grind out. They didn't slide out this nice. But if we take a look at the end of this piece, uh, you can see there, that is the original weld from the upright on the driver's area. You can see how it kind of came through there and they actually had a hole in it. So they did a really nice job. And it was just welded just a little bit back there, but it came out. And so we're going to move on. So after doing some of these other pieces coming out of here, I determined that this was in fact the original front end that when this car was built, this was what was on it. Now when chrome molly tubing is made, it actually has a scale that's on the outside of it. You know, it's heat treated, it's drawn through dyes, whatever it is, but that color that's on the outside of it is actually like a heat treat and it's an actual scale. So if you don't clean that off, and when you're welding uh, you know, two pieces together like that, this is what can happen. Look at the inclusions on this weld. As I'm grinding this thing back, that's what I find. It's not good. And if you're gonna be welding chrome molly together and it's gonna be in a structural thing like this, you know what, you better sand it, get the damn scale off of it, or this is gonna happen. So again, it's just basically from dirty metal is how that happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing sanded down. We're gonna do the same thing like we did on the other horn on the other side, get it back as far as we can. And this one here, I've gotta take it back just a little bit farther because I gotta get all this crap, you know, this contamination you know, off of this pipe before I try and weld another pipe to it. You know, to the normal person, you don't see how much work has to go into these chassis um, you know, just getting them prepped to where you can throw another front end on it, let alone cut the damn thing off, get it lined up right, you know, have all the tools ready to get some of these things out. And it's just a real pain in the ass and it's time consuming as hell. So moving on here, um, once I get this one out, I'll go to the other horns, do the same thing. Then I'll finalize the angle that's on them, make sure it's nice and square. And then 
you got to go to the inside of all these tubes. You know, when these uprights and everything are welded on there, you know, it will protrude through there a little bit. So when you go to slip the new piece down inside there, well, it ain't going to fit. You know, it's got a couple thou tolerance, you know, where this thing goes in there at. But there's another thing that we have to look at. Once we get these things all cleaned out on the inside and I'll blow them out and I'll actually, I'll take some alcohols, denatured alcohol and stuff and blow in there too, just to try and get all as much of the contamination out and, you know, clean it up that way. But we'll also go on here and we're going to check alignment of these things. And here in just a second, I'm going to show you how we do that. So when I'm cleaning these things out, I actually have a couple different sizes of inch and a quarter OD tubing that I test fit these pieces with. If you just go and <clears throat> shove in a piece um, right off the get-go and it's not just perfect, well, guess what? It catches, it gets hung up, you're trying to jam this thing out of there. So I actually make a couple pieces that are two and three thousand smaller than what they're supposed to be. So I know where I'm attempting to get cleaned up at because I don't want to sit here and grind on one area where I think it might be, you know, catching it and making the tubing thinner. So here's all my different selections of tubing just to check that inside fitment. Once I get the inside all done, I'll jump on the outside and here we are, we're removing that scaling. All the pipe that I use from SRI here in Indy is all polished chrome molly tubing. All this scale has already been taken off. Now this is my alignment bar. This is probably one of the most important things when doing a front half that maybe a lot of chassis people probably don't look at. And this does cause issues. If you look at this, Look how this pipe is running, okay? So the horn sticking off the foot box is actually has this pipe pointed towards the inside of the car. It's not exactly straight with where it's going to land, and it's going to land exactly where the string is pointed here. That pipe is pointed to the inside. Now, what causes this is when the car is built. When the car is built, those horns that are up there, there's uprights coming in and cross members coming in to the end of that horn, right here, all this stuff is welded and it draws this horn, it draws it to the inside. And then when the car is actually running, it kind of wants to twist it in there too. Here's the problem. You go and stick a straight piece in this, you're gonna have to manipulate that pipe to make it land on the other end. Now you've already put it in tension and then you're gonna weld it and then you're gonna hit the gas with 10,000 horsepower. Hey, guess what? Wrong answer. You need to fix the issue. And the issue is that these horns sticking out the front aren't going in the right direction. My big issue is, is that there's manufacturers out there of chassis that are pre-building the front ends, right? The car's not even there. And they're pre-building these things, you know, with fixtures and all that, and they look really nice. But when they go to join these things together with these cars after they chop the front end off, they're manipulating those pipes, putting them in tension, and then welding them. I believe that is what's causing failures in this class. Now, people will debate also, oh, it's O49 thick tubing, that's the issue, whatever it may be. But you know what? There's a lot of cars out there running O49 and they stay straight. The Coletta cars, the Lucas cars, they all look really nice. But guess what? As much power and everything we're asking out of these things, O65 pipe is not a bad thing. This is my opinion. Man, I might not make a lot of friends like that, but guess what? It does work, okay? I've ran 058. I, there's things you have to do. So you have to change your tune-up. But guess what? It works. It's safer. It's stronger. So let's all join on the bandwagon here and just kind of go forward with this deal. Now, Chrome Molly has some crazy, crazy memory. So it, it's not like I'm taking this thing way past its, you know, yield strength or anything like that. And to move it up here, it doesn't take a whole lot. Now I have learned this, after I put tension on them and I can whack it with a hammer, it helps stay in place that way. Sounds goofy? No, it actually does work. It relieves that stress and lets that pipe be in its natural spot instead of being like pulled in from the welds and that kind of thing. So I'll do this on the uppers, I'll do this on the lowers, I'll check the left, I'll check the right, and just keep, you know, kind of plugging away on it until I get to that point where I'm happy with the alignment. You know, one thing about it, I don't try and do it all in one hit. I sneak up on it. I can tell how much pressure I'm on it. I can look and see how much the pipe's moving, you know, to get it into that straight position. And I don't get after it. So anyway, this actually does work. And I will say this, the front ends 
lasts longer. You think about it, if you just had a piece of welding rod and you bend it in a semi, you know, just put an arch on it a little bit, and then you're gonna bend it in another angle, it's already gonna wanna go to the inside. And I honestly feel that some of these failures, that's been the reason. Now, along with fixing these horns, there are some other things that happen on these front ends. So you really wanna put some arch in these front ends. And I'm not gonna to get too deep on this because there's things that I do that I don't necessarily want other people to know that I do because it actually works. So a lot of time when somebody puts the car, you know, on the fixture table, you know, they'll put it at an X angle. You know, how much that foot box is pointed up and then they're gonna match that to the front end. And you want a little bit of an arch in it. What it's gonna do is it's gonna help support that weight when the driver gets in, the motor gets put in, all those kinds of things. And actually you want the car to arch up when it's going down the track. What that does is it changes the CG of the engine. The engine drives those rear tires out in the motor, out in the middle of the track, you know, right down to the track anyway. And that's how this thing gains traction. So what's different with my deal? I honestly, I can't tell you. I really can't. But I will say this, the way that I do it is the right way. And it's also a way that another chassis manufacturer that I talked to told me how he did some of his cars. So is it just my idea? Well, kind of, it was my idea, but I had to go to someone else and say, hey man, am I just stupid thinking this way? And then they came back and they said, no, Rob, I, can, I actually do that on certain things. And I said, oh, well, hell, that's cool as hell. Well, can we talk about how to do it? And he said, hell yeah. And it's Murph McKinney. He's one of the best chassis builders that are out here, period. In Lafayette, Indiana, very, very smart man. And if he don't know it, he surrounds himself with people who do. That's what I like about Murph. See, those old pipes are around 20, 21 feet long. Well, guess what? You need 13 feet off of one stick for one frame rail between the foot box and the front end. So there's one other thing that I do here. This goes in line with kind of the things I do behind the doors here, but I will show this. I index these pipes. Now, if you can figure out why I index these pipes, then you can probably figure out what I'm doing. I'm not gonna show you exactly what I do to these pipes. I will show you the end result. And I will show you how that I get to that result, but I'm not showing you how I do it. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that sounds real fair because it's my damn idea. Anyway, but you can see here, all these have a scribed line on them. Every one of them before the next process happens. And if you guys stay tuned, I might show you something. I don't know if I will or not. Yeah, I'll probably will. You stay tuned and I'm gonna show you how we save top fuel car front ends, how to keep them nice and safe all the time. Thanks for watching.